Hi, I'm Stan Riddle with Viberline. Today we're going to talk about thermal growth, uh, specifically as it relates to aligning and leveling machinery. Uh, when I started in maintenance work some 30, 40 years ago, thermal growth was one of those cryptic things that you heard engineers talking about and it was really math heavy and took a lot of calculations. Uh, at the end of the day, thermal growth is a pretty straightforward thing. As machines get hotter, they get bigger. They grow because of expansion. Uh, that expansion is measurable and it's pretty easy to calculate. Uh, we're going to go over some different methods to do that. There are some just purely mathematical calculations. We have an app to calculate thermal growth that works really well. But I just want to talk about some of the basics to start with. Uh, as an example, let's just say we have a pump and it's pumping a 250 degree liquid. We need to calculate its thermal growth. So there's only three things you really need to know. How big it is, how hot it is, or how hot it's going to get from cold to hot, it's differential temperature, and the material it's made out of. So we're going to show you a couple of examples on uh, where you can find those things and how to calculate it. So we can take, for example, a pump. It's pumping a 250 degree liquid. We need to know, number one, what is the height of the pump from the bottom of the foot to about the center line of the shaft? So that is its height or its length vertically. The second thing we need to know is what is its differential temperature? And that is the temperature between what it's at when it's at its running speed and what temperature it would be when it's shut down. So let's say it's pumping a 250 degree liquid when it's hot, but the room's only 80 degrees when it's cold. That gives us the differential temperature. And lastly, we've got to know this little number called the coefficient of linear thermal expansion. That can be calculated many different ways based on the materials. But in essence, a good rule of thumb for industrial equipment is cast iron or carbon steel. Uh, those numbers are fairly close to each other and we'll show you here that the coefficient of linear thermal expansion for cast iron is about 0 0.000006. For carbon steel it's about 0 0.000058. So those numbers are really close, so close that I'm not as concerned when we get down to six decimal places. I just want to get a good estimation of what the thermal growth calculates out to be. So back to our pump example. If it is, let's just say, 12 inches tall from the bottom of the foot to the center line of the shaft, that gives us the length. If it is uh, running 250 degrees when it's hot and 80 degrees when it's not hot, that's a difference of 170 degrees. And lastly, it's cast iron, so we know the coefficient. And so here's an easy example. You'll have heard people for years call this TLC, temperature times length times the coefficient. So if we add those three things together or multiply them together, it gives us our thermal growth calculation. But here's where you have to be careful. The entire pump may not heat up to 250 degrees. It may be 230 at the split line of the shaft. It may only be 100 degrees down at the bottom of the foot. And somewhere in between those two, it's going to be some temperature in between those two. So it's best if you take a few averages of temperature from the split line all the way to the bottom of the foot and get an average growth. So let's show you how to do that. So in our discussion, we talked about these two items. We have an electric motor coupled driving an in-suction pump. Not an artist, but that's my example. So here are the things we talked about. We said we need to know T, L, C. T is the temperature, and that's the differential temperature, delta T. We also need to know the length, and we need to know the coefficient of linear thermal expansion. So in this case, we probably have, in most cases, this would be cast iron, as if it's a good quality pump, it's cast iron as well. I need to know the distance from the roughly the split line to the bottom of the machine feet. We're going to say that's 12 inches. So we know our length is 12. Our temperature is, it's an 80 degree room when this pump's not running, 
250 degrees when it's up and at its operating temperature. So that is a differential of 170 degrees. If I know the cast iron and its coefficient is 0 0.000006, and that's roughed around, depending on the type of cast iron, it could be a little more, could be a little less. Carbon steel is about the same. At that many decimal places, we're not going to be as concerned about complete accuracy. So I will say T, temperature, 170 degrees, times L, the length, 12 inches, times the coefficient, 0 0.00006. And if I add all this together or multiply this together, it's going to give me the answer of calculated thermal growth of this motor. But there's some caveats we have to pay particular attention to. I might want to take an average temperature right here at the center of the split line, and maybe another one halfway down. I may even want to take that on both bearings so I can get an average of growth. And if that average growth isn't 170 degrees, but maybe I add these three together and I add these three together and I di divide the answer by three, that gives me an average. Maybe it's only 140 degrees. So that may be the real thermal growth number I need to contend with. And again, if I say 140, times 12 inches times 0 0.00006 gives me the answer. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do the math on this. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. uh, 140 times 12 inches times 0 0.00006 equals, hang on, 140 times 12 times point zero 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 six tells me that this is going to grow by about ten thousandths of an inch from cold to hot. But now my motor may have some thermal growth as well. It may be 80 degrees when it's cold and 130 when it's hot. So now I've got to calculate a second temperature change. Maybe it's the same height uh, times point zero 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 six. Sorry, I'm missing a decimal place there. Uh, or roughly one third of this. If this grows ten, maybe this grows three. So what I'd have to do is actually get the differential between these two and calculate thermal growth of the pump for seven thousandths of an inch. And what that means is this, I'm going to set my motor, when it's cold, I'm going to flip this page, is that okay? So when I set up on my laser, and I would do this on the laser screen, I'm going to say my motor is going to be here, plus seven mils or seven thousandths of an inch. So when my alignment is cold, going to be something like this. My pump is actually going to be sitting a little lower because it's going to grow seven thousandths more than this grows. So when we get up to temperature, both these shafts will be collinear or in the same straight line. There are a couple things I recommend that are really important about thermal growth. Number one, it is an engineering calculation. And while it's pretty straightforward, uh, mechanics typically should not have to calculate thermal growth. They should either, one, get it from their engineering department, two, get it from the machinery manufacturer because they should have more depth into calculating thermal growth. So they're just going to go wild with it, but I want you to have a good understanding as at maintenance mechanics, you need to understand something about thermal growth. So if someone tells you this little 40 horsepower machine is going to grow a hundred thousandths of an inch, can almost assure it's not going to happen because it doesn't grow that much. So you need to have some understanding of the calculation. I would get it from the manufacturer or from your engineering department. Uh, we also have a free app called Thermaline that you can download to your smartphone or tablet device where you punch in these same types of things, the center height, the temperature, and the coefficient. It'll even allow you to put in up to four averages, and it calculates thermal growth very well using the same math that we used in our demonstration. 
Uh, lastly, if you really need to get alignment on the spot, you need to know not only thermal growth, but dynamic changes in machinery. Not only does this temperature move, move machinery around, but pressures and thermal changes in piping do as well. So I would recommend if, if you really need to get it on the money, check with us at Viberline. We have an OL2R, offline to running program that works with our NXA professional, which actually measures the dynamic and thermal changes in movement from machinery from cold to hot or from hot to cold. So I want to thank you for joining us today with this webinar on thermal growth uh, from Viberline. Uh, we appreciate your input and your patience with watching us. Hopefully this has been beneficial. But stick around. We're going to have a question-answer session. We'll, we'll do this as long as we can uh, until the clock runs out. So give us a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back with you to try our best to answer your questions. Thanks. I think anybody who has pumps or fans, any kind of equipment that's mounted up to a motor, should take this class. You can always read the instructions and go through step by step, but stuff always comes up, especially working on old equipment. It's always good to talk to somebody who's been doing it for 30 years. What intrigued me about the class is all of the precision, alignment, vibration, uh, analysis, um, everything the class offered. Most of the classes we've been to that you just sit there all day in class with a book and a PowerPoint. A lot of other classes I have, they kind of just read the book to you. I think we spent at least 80% hands-on, probably more, which made it a whole lot better. Our RPM class is really good for anybody in the industry. We're teaching some old skills and some new skills. The number one thing is the instruction that you're getting, the knowledge that they have, hands-on knowledge, not book knowledge, but hands-on experience knowledge where they can, uh, in layman's terms, tell you what they're talking about by giving you a past experience. You know, we have brand new technicians straight out of tech school. We have engineers with two or three decades or more of experience. We've had maintenance managers and supervisors. Everybody benefits from that. This I'm able to ask question after question. I was just talking to Stan about a really unique problem I'm having, and uh, he's actually helped out a lot. It's time well spent, you're, you're going to learn a lot, and it's going to be fun. It's not a boring class. It's a good class. I think any mechanic in any industrial site, power plant, refinery, water treatment, whatever it is, it's all the same. It's definitely not going to hurt. Awesome class, I've got to tell you straight up. Some of the best training I've ever been, if not the best. So we have a few questions here through the magic of smart devices. We'll try to get to at least a few of these before our time runs out. And uh, again, if, in case I forget it, keep sending those questions in. Those that we can't answer online, we will uh, try to reach you by email and answer any questions you have. Uh, the first one says, uh, you said use the .00006 number or whatever for the thermal expansion number. Where did that come from? It's a good, good question. Uh, coefficients of linear thermal expansion is just physics numbers, and it's just based on as molecules heat up, they get further and further apart, so the cast iron gets bigger. That's where it comes from. Uh, the numbers I got were from the Machinery's Handbook, uh, which is a big green book that's been around forever with a lot of math stuff in it for maintenance and engineering. You can find these numbers online. Uh, just type in linear thermal expansion for cast iron or carbon steel or whatever. But a good question, thank you. Let me try another one here. Uh, here's a good one. It says, I have a chilled water pump that gets pretty cold. Does thermal growth formulas work the same way for that? G uh, good question. Yes, it does, just in reverse. So if I have a, a, a pump that's getting cooler as it, heat, as it gets its, to its temperature, it actually shrinks. So instead of setting the motor high, you may have to set it a few thousandths low. That's a good question, something I don't think about very often, but yeah, thermal growth works going colder the same way it does going hotter. Uh, let me try another one here. Uh, 
Here, here we go. I'm curious, just how picky should we be about thermal growth? We've never had any problems on our compressors, and they get pretty warm. Uh, it's a good question. I'm not sure I know how to answer that. If, uh, if you're not having any vibration problems, you're not having any excessive wear problems, uh, you're not blowing seals on your compressors, then honestly, I wouldn't be too terribly concerned about it. Uh, flexible couplings take up a little misalignment. You always have an alignment tolerance, plus or minus two or four or six thousandths, whatever, depending on the speed. So it may be, uh, and what I've found just in reality a lot of times is even though the compressor heats up a little bit, the motor heats up a little bit too. And sometimes they grow almost the same amount relative to each other. So it may not be an issue for you. Again, I would check with my engineering or maintenance department and just find out if you think that's uh, something you need. Let's try to get at least one more uh, before we run out of time here. Uh, here we go. It says, uh, we always set our motors five high uh, as long as I've been working here. That's what my boss told me to do, but we also lose a lot of couplings. Do you think five high might be wrong? Uh, I assume five, you mean five mils or five thousandths of an inch. Honestly, I, I can't answer that without more information. Uh, I can tell you that back in the Stone Age when I started in maintenance, they told us, you know, thermal growth is five thousandths. Well, where does that come from? And nobody could answer it. I'm not saying that, you know, whoever, your boss or whoever gave you that number is right or wrong, but you might want to look into it a little more. Uh, again, I mentioned the Thermaline app that, that we have at Vibraline. It's free. Uh, you might want to download it and just try it out. Do the math. Take some temperature measurements with a little heat gun, a little laser gun, and uh, find out if that machine really is heating up as much or as little as you think. Certainly, make sure you got the right coupling application, that the alignment's good things like that, but if you're losing a lot of couplings, I think it was couplings, uh, yeah, if you're losing a lot of couplings, then I would be investigating why that happens. Could be alignment, could be thermal growth, could be the wrong design or too much horsepower or something, but I'd look into that and make sure. Um, just from a time standpoint, that's all we can probably answer online during the course of the video, but again, please send your uh, questions to us. We'll try to get back to you as promptly as we can and answer your questions if we can. We've got a good pool of resources here at Vibraline we can uh, turn to. And uh, lastly, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for your time uh, and your patience with us. Hopefully this has been some benefit. Uh, you've learned a little more about thermal growth. And as always, if, if we can help, uh, feel free to contact us at Vibraline. Give us a call or shoot us an email. We'll be glad to help in any way we've in any way we can. And again, I'm Stan Riddle with Viberline, and thanks again for tuning in.